friends. Today I'm going to teach you how to make sangria. This is requested by one of my cameramen, who is also my editor, Colin. This one's for you, Colin. Actually, Colin's over there. This one's for you, Colin. <laughs> All right, now, sangria has a fair number of ingredients. It's kind of a process, but it's not complicated, so I'm going to walk you through this. What does sangria contain? It contains slices of apple, slices of orange, sugar, orange juice, brandy, and red wine. It's really not complicated. So let's do this together. You start with a pitcher. You're gonna take, and by the way, this is sangria for two. This is enough sangria for two people, all right? You take about a quarter to a half of an apple. You make little tiny pieces out of that quarter to a half of an apple. Do the same thing with the quarter to a half of an orange. I've already done that. And you pour it in to your pitcher. You then put in a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Now, the next thing that we do is we muddle the sugar with the fruit. What is muddling? Muddling is gently but forcefully pressing the flavors out of the fruit and the sugar. Now, most bartenders have a muddler, which is a tool that has uh, rounded but hard ends. I don't know, I don't seem to have a muddler anywhere in my house, I can't find one, so I'm gonna make do with what I have, and what I have is this cheese slicer. The bottom of this cheese slicer is perfect for muddling though because it is a rounded but hard end. So we take our pitcher, turn it to the side, and gently but forcefully press the fruit. So they get kind of mushy looking and they blend in with the sugar. And we do this for a little while. What you should be getting is the very faint scent of the apple and the orange while you're doing this that tells you that you're doing it correctly and that you've done it enough. I can smell a little orange, I can smell a little apple, so for the moment that's enough. All right, next we take our orange juice and we're gonna take about a quarter cup of orange juice, maybe a third, let's see, and pour it in, and that's about that much. And then we're gonna take about a quarter cup of brandy. Don't use expensive brandy because you're mixing all sorts of stuff up together. Get inexpensive brandy. This is relatively inexpensive. That's what I'm using. Again, this is about a quarter to a third of a cup. I'm gonna say about a quarter. Okay. What do we do now? We muddle again. Now we've got more liquid in here to press the fruit into. And again, we're just trying to release the flavors of the fruit and the sugar into the brandy and the orange juice. All right. The next ingredient that we use, and again, this is sangria for two, is a half a bottle of red wine. I've got more than half a bottle here, so I'm not gonna use all this. Let's see. Okay. Now, you shouldn't use very expensive red wine for this either, because again, if you're mixing up a lot of stuff, especially if your drink includes fruit juices, you should not waste your money on expensive liquors because they're just gonna get all muddled together uh, in terms of the flavors, and you're just kind of wasting your money. If you wanna do it, you go for it, you be you, but that's not what, uh, what I would recommend. So now we have sliced apples, sliced oranges, sugar, orange juice, brandy, and red wine. And at this point, we're done muddling, but we're going to stir using our, uh, our cocktail uh, spoon. If we do not have a cocktail spoon, we can use an iced teaspoon or really any spoon, it doesn't matter. Now, we're stirring this to make sure that the sugar, which is in here, is fully dissolved. We don't want a little lumps or graininess from sugar. Sugar dissolves pretty quickly in almost everything, but sometimes it does require a little bit of a stir. So, we stir it around. And then we take the entire pitcher and we chill it. When we're done chilling it, we take it out of the refrigerator and we take a wine glass with ice. We pour our sangria into our wine glass. Oh, there's some chunks of fruit, yum. Look at that beautiful red color. By the way, sangria, the word, comes from the Spanish word uh, sangra for blood because of the color. 
The drink, by the way, was, uh, was created back in 200 BCE, so this may be the oldest drink I've ever made for you. Um, it was originated in Spain. When the Romans conquered Spain, they uh, decided that they would plant and grow red grapes for the first time in Spain, and that's when this drink was invented. Um, it was a very popular drink because at the time, water was bacteria-filled, so you would get sick if you drank water, but if you distilled water down to wine, um, there was no more bacteria and it was safe to drink. So that's why uh, sangria was so popular back then and continues to be popular now. Is there a garnish for this drink? Yes, even though it's full of fruit, we add more fruit. The garnish for a sangria is an orange slice. So we're gonna run the orange slice around the side. We are gonna squeeze in to get that extra little bit of fresh orange flavor. We're gonna place it on the side of our wine glass and there we have sangria. And there's enough left in the pitcher for somebody else. Ah, that is so good. That is a summer drink. By the way, in case you're not already aware, you can make this drink with white wine. It's awesome. You can make it with champagne. That's my favorite kind of, of sangria, actually. Champagne sangria is also wonderful, light, refreshing. All sangria, in my opinion, is wonderful. And, uh, mmm. This is no exception. Wow, is that good. It's fresh, it's fruity, it's summery. Although it's a little bit complicated to make, you end up with this wonderful, wonderful drink, and it's a party drink. You can make an entire pitcher full of this and share it with your friends. Everybody's gonna like it, I promise. Drink up, enjoy.